Every war has losers. In the currency wars, Sweden has ended up as collateral damage as its central bank vainly tries to stop the krona from strengthening, even as the domestic boom threatens to run out of control. Today, Sweden's Riksbank added another 65 billion krona to its quantitative easing programme, buying government bonds, and it pushed forward by six months its prediction of when it'll end up raising rates, which are now at a historically low level of minus 0.35%. And the response of the market to all this? Well, the krona immediately leapt by 0.7% against the euro. Traders have concluded that the Riksbank wasn't as committed to keeping the krona down as it appeared. Investors are usually shy of fighting against a central bank, but in this case, they're merely betting that Sweden will be caught in the blast zone of the next round of ECB stimulus. The Riksbank QE is going to involve buying up almost a third of the country's government bonds, but compared to the size of the economy, it's heavily outgunned by the Eurozone's own currency debasement. You can see that on here. The blue line shows the plans by the European Central Bank in total. The green line is just the European Central Bank's uh, government bond purchases and the red bank, the, the red line here, sorry, is what the Riksbank uh, plans in Sweden. Uh, you can see it's uh, uh, this area here being the future. It's going to be far less significant, although still very significant. Now, Sweden and its central bank have a much bigger problem than this, though, and it's one that's shared to a lesser extent by both the US Federal Reserve and the Bank of England. The problem is that no matter what the central bank does, doesn't seem to be able to get to its inflation target. The result of its extraordinary intervention and negative rates is that the housing market's overheating, household borrowings rising rapidly, and the economy's booming, with GDP rising at the fastest rate in the developed world in the second quarter, which is the latest one reported. Now, trying to keep the currency down with the euro avoids destroying the country's export sector, and in that respect, it succeeded with a hefty current account surplus for Sweden of more than 5% of the economy. But the core inflation, excluding mortgage interest costs, is at just 1%, still only half the official target. Even so, it looks as though inflation is starting to trickle in, as that 1% is up from being briefly below zero in 2012 and has been rising fairly steadily. The danger is that traditional economic theory might at some point kick in, and the domestic boom feed through into higher wages, higher inflation expectations and higher prices. There's little sign of it so far, but if it does, Sweden will look pretty foolish. That wouldn't be the first time. The Riksbank raised rates aggressively in 2010 as the soar away economy pushed up uh, inflation, and then it had to slash them again when the economy swooned the following year. On here you can see real GDP growth in blue. This was the big boom in 2010, which then turned to bust uh, in late 2011. Uh, and in red, here's the Swedish policy rate. You can see the sharp rise here uh, from virtually zero during the crisis up to 2% uh, by the end of 2011, before it was then cut all the way back to zero uh, at the start of this year and now negative. Now, as a result of this, central bank watchers everywhere hold up Sweden as an example for other central banks of the danger of raising rates too early. Given how well the economy is doing, though, they might soon have to hold it up as an example of the danger of keeping rates too low for too long.